My entitled sibling is demanding that I give them my extra car, despite the fact that they have an awful track record with cars and would probably only cause me a lot of trouble. So I decided to say no, and now I'm being called heartless as well as an absolute jerk. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. So for a bit of background, a sibling asked me to borrow my extra car. Now, basically, I had a decent car, and then my dad took it away from me as a punishment. This eventually led to me inheriting a very old but surprisingly in good condition car car that a relative was nice enough to offer to me because they couldn't sell it. And then I was randomly given my original car back a few years later. Now, I'm just starting out in life and I have been in school for a very long time, but I make enough and I am trying to build. My sibling is older and often is struggling financially and their car got repossessed. They apparently bought a nicer car and they couldn't keep up with making the payments. They share custody of one of their kids, so they need a car to deal with that. They said that they have new co-workers that live nearby and the other kid's school is really close in walking distance. They asked me for money this week and I said no because it was too much and last time they didn't even say thank you so I wasn't going to sacrifice just for that. They then asked if they could borrow my old car and I said no. And trust me, there are lots of reasons why I don't want to give them this car. Now for starters, historically they have an awful track record with their cars. They abandoned one on a private property which led to it being towed and recently they told me they have a bunch of tickets. They also told me that they can't get car insurance from anywhere due to their past. And before the repossessed car, they bought a lemon of a car and didn't even get the title. And I had to try to help with that. They ended up selling it to a car dealership for about $50, only to then need a new car after that. Now, prior to buying the repossessed car, a family member told them to ask me about the car and my mom about the nicer one that I was actually in the process of getting. When I confronted them about this, they lied and said that they didn't know. When I pointed out about being told to ask me, they said that maybe they were confused. They never even asked about my old car back then. Now, what they don't know is that I know they spoke to our mom about it and insulted the car because it wasn't good enough for them. Meanwhile, I'm in another tax bracket and was driving that old piece of garbage car before I got my original one back. They also don't know that I know during this conversation with our mom is that they lied and told our mom that I said I don't want to have a relationship with my dad, which I never even said. And this is only after confiding in them about issues that we were having. It basically led me to believe that they were just trying to get the nice car that was taken away from me. Now, the funny thing is, is that if they had asked me back then, I probably would have just given it to them, even though I could really use the money from selling the old car. And it's right about then that I realized that they would probably take from me if they could, just to better themselves and not care in the slightest. But still, I never confronted them about the lie they told while I was trying to repair a relationship relationship with my dad. A couple weeks ago, they asked to buy this old car as a second one, and then their car got repossessed. I mean, why would you think about buying a second car when you don't even have enough money for the first one? I mean, I had to say no for several reasons. First and foremost, I'm in a field where I need to have a clean record. They are also aware that I'm in the process of a background check for a job that can really be life-changing, including loan forgiveness. I also don't want to be liable if something happens, namely an accident or a ticket or something like that. And this is mostly because in general they won't pay and instead I would have to pay. And I also just don't have the money to be roped into a potential lawsuit should they get into some kind of accident. I explained the liability issue and they were still mad saying I put my career over them. Their ongoing transportation issue was also an issue during Christmas because I refused to go to their apartment in an area that has gang members, substance dealers, awful people, and a piece of garbage partner. They were were supposed to take the train to us and celebrate with our family, and I spent all this time and money cooking food when I should have been studying, and money was already tight. I mean, I didn't want to go there because they live in gang territory. That's an issue for my safety and the career of me and my partner. We had other stops to make near where we were supposed to gather, and I did not want to change my plans, which included visiting my partner's family. She lied about it and said I was making stuff up, and that their kids deserve a good Christmas. We were supposed to have a big family dinner at my grandfather's house and he canceled because it was too cold or something like that. But in reality, I think it was because of my sibling. I think that he's upset because he's tired of helping them and he wants everyone to do more because then he came to our parents' house and demanded that we give him a bunch of food for him to take over to them and was acting really nasty the entire time. Not only could they have taken the train to come to us and the kids would have had a great Christmas meal with family and toys, but then later on we found out there was a weapon 
weapon in the house. But apparently I was just making stuff up. Now anyways, I said that the only way they could have the car is if they buy it and put it in their name as well as put insurance on it because I literally could not think of any other middle ground. But this proposition absolutely set them off. I honestly don't want liability for any accidents or any tickets as well as for them using my car for any illegal purposes or anything else that could go wrong. I wouldn't even charge if I gave it like half the value and I would accept payments over time. They are also struggling financially and the whole family has helped over the years. I am also younger than them but I've done better for myself but really I'm just starting out because I've been in school for so long. Now here's the thing. I've given them money. I bought them a bunch of starter stuff when they got an apartment even though I wasn't working at the time myself. I've given a birthday gift gift, as well as gift for their kids, offer to pick up from the train station for different things, several different events just to help them out. I mean, the last time I gave them money, they didn't even acknowledge it or even say thank you. And also, when I said I was sick, they didn't even ask how I was feeling. And when I said this, they didn't even comment on it and said that I'm selfish, among a bunch of other stuff. They didn't care that I was protecting myself and my career because they said, oh, well, we have jobs and needs as well. So apparently, I should put their needs above my own even if it can put me in an awful situation. They said they're not mad that I said no, but because I don't care about them or their kids, and I only think about myself. They said I'm not a sister or an aunt, and because of the issues with our parents, I'm barely even a daughter. They pretty much just said that I'm an awful person, and that they never want to talk to me again. So should I give them my car? What should I do? I mean, it really sounds like you don't want to give them your car, and I would just honestly leave it at that. Like, let's look at the facts real quick. They have an awful track record. They've treated you and your family like garbage. They're constantly asking for more stuff and they're never giving back. Like the list goes on and on. You've given a really detailed list as to why they're not someone you want to trust. And honestly, I'm right there with you. I would not give them my car for a second. There's no way that's going to happen. So truly, I don't blame you for taking that step and saying, no, I'm not giving you my car because their track record is sketchy. And you can bet the same thing is probably going to happen to your car. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. My boyfriend is being really cheap all the time, and at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. My boyfriend and I have been together for three years now. We moved in together a year ago in a city about three hours away from our main city, and this is where we had everything. Friends and work and school, and I had to leave literally everything behind. I didn't want to move there, but he kept insisting on how the rent as well as the prices of the houses were way less expensive. Well, I tried for six months. I got depressed. I couldn't fit in. And we moved back to the main city where both of our families are. And he also has friends there. Lately, whenever I keep talking about projects, he complains that it's too expensive. At some point, I needed to get myself bras because I've had my bras for over four to five years and they were getting really ripped up. Again, though, it was way too expensive. So I started being really petty about the bra situation. And I guess he felt some kind of remorse because he apologized and said that I could use the new ones. For the whole year, we've been saving up for a big trip to his home country in East Europe, and the only reason why we didn't do it this summer was because we both started a new job and didn't have any vacations yet. The plan was to go with his parents and his brothers. We were also supposed to go visit other relatives about two weeks ago, and I asked him if we should look into dates in the summer of 2024 just so we could plan the trip with his family. He then changed his mind about the trip because it was way too expensive, even though we already had the money set aside. So I do not understand the logic behind that. When I tell him about how cheap he is, he keeps saying that we do not have the jobs that allow us to do these kinds of activities. We both work full time with a salary of $24 an hour for him and $25 an hour for me. I'm also completing my degree by December and have a huge raise at work. But when I mention it to add to the point of us being able to do such projects, he doesn't even acknowledge it. When I ask him why he's being so cheap. He says that his parents didn't get to go travel or do fun stuff when he was younger, and this is when they just immigrated, and that they're only now able to do that 10 years later. His parents are 50 years old, by the way, so I confronted him about not wanting to wait 25 more years just to start enjoying life, but he keeps bringing this point up over and over again. Today, I picked him up from school, and I asked him if he could get a pack of celery since I went grocery shopping for tonight's supper, and I forgot celery myself. He said no because celery was too expensive. And at this point, I'm honestly losing it and I seriously don't know what to do. Okay, first and foremost, why is he the boss of your finances?
finances. It sounds like you make more money than him first and foremost, so I'm kind of scratching my head here. Why does he have the final say on what you do with your money? Like seriously, you can only buy a bra or get celery if he approves it? What is going on right now? I think the bigger question here, aside from him being so stingy with his money, is basically the question of, well, why is he able to do this? The way he's being really controlling with the finances is so far out of line. That is a much bigger situation, in my opinion, than him trying to claim that he's tight with money. Right now, this is a control issue, and that is so inappropriate. I mean, it really does sound like you have two separate bank accounts, and if I were you, I would keep it that way. Can you imagine how he's going to act if all of your money is in the same account? He would probably turn into this giant jerk. Like, seriously, there's no way. Like, think about it. All these small things you have to run by him just to try and have, like, the small necessities in your life. That, in my opinion, is completely inappropriate and so absurd. So seriously, your boyfriend is out of line. The way he's acting is incredibly controlling and very manipulative. And in my opinion, his weird desire to have a lot of control over your finances is a much bigger deal than you probably realize. My wife has secretly racked up over $16,000 in credit card debt. And right now, I feel utterly betrayed. And I seriously don't know what to do. So as the title suggests, my wife racked up over $16,000 in credit card debt without my knowledge. Now, I suspected that something was up because she didn't have a job for most of the year and was spending money like she did when she had one. I would try to talk to her about her credit card balance, which would then basically lead to her becoming irate. She would snub me off and tell me it's none of my business, even though we're married and legally speaking, her debt is my debt. But last night, I finally confronted her about it. And after a long, grueling argument, she finally told me how much of a balance was on one of her cards. It was about $10,000. Now, she said that's all there was, and I asked her if she was lying, and she swore that she wasn't. Well, guess what? She absolutely was lying. The next morning, we had another conversation, and this time, I pressed her further. And slowly, she started revealing, one by one, all of the details about her debt, and it all added up to over $16,000, including the $10,000 from earlier. Right now, I honestly feel betrayed by my partner. I am a financially responsible person who has many credit cards and never paid a single penny in interest. I am currently the only breadwinner of the family, and basically, I'm picking up her slack to try and keep my family afloat. I'm saving for retirement, and I'm making investment decisions. She is going back to school, and I was more than happy to support her in that, but after finding this out, it feels like a huge breach of trust. This whole time, I thought the only debt we were in was from our mortgage and student loans that she has, but credit card debt is literally so crippling, and it's not like student loans or a mortgage at all. I'm flabbergasted by the fact that while I was supporting us and making the right decisions to set us up for success in the future, my wife was literally digging us into a hole. She clearly did not have it under control and did not feel like she could ask for help or let me know what was going on. This whole time, I thought we were doing well for our age, as well as the money that we had as a couple. But this feels like a huge punch in our financial and personal relationship. I don't know what to do, and at this point, I'm questioning my decision in choosing my partner. Okay, first and foremost, this is awful. I can't believe that she would hide this kind of money from you and try to keep this a secret. Like $16,000 in debt is seriously a massive amount of money. And that's not something that just happens overnight. Like that's a conscious decision to be like, okay, let's keep spending. So personally, if I was in your shoes, I would definitely be saying, okay, well, school's off the table. We need to start paying off this debt before anything else. And with that in mind, in my opinion, it's probably time for her to get a job. Like she needs to start working to pay off this debt. This is seriously not okay. You can't just have that and then expect your partner to bail you out. Because here's this guy trying to make good decisions for his family, only for his wife to literally stab him in the back. Like, that's exactly what happened in my opinion. So hopefully some kind of solution can be found from this. Because what you're describing right now sounds like an absolute nightmare. And I seriously don't blame you for feeling betrayed. Am I the jerk for canceling dinner plans with my parents after they practically tried to replace me? Here's what happened. Now, I first want to start off by saying that I'm still pretty upset about what happened, but I'll try to explain my story very clearly. I'm a 28-year-old female that made a pretty dumb decision roughly nine years ago when I decided to elope with my then-boyfriend by the name of Mike. Mike is not his real name. My parents hated Mike from the start. They thought that he was a user. I thought they were meddling too much in my business, so with Mike's encouragement, I went completely no contact with them. They tried repeatedly to get back in contact with me for the next three or so years, but I entirely shut them out and didn't communicate with them at all. After Mike dumped me roughly four years 
after we eloped almost five years ago from today, I was in a pretty rough place. It seemed like years where I was just wandering between pointless relationships and dead-end jobs. Fast forward to this year, and I feel that I finally have some stability in my life. In late August, I decided to reach out to my parents again and reconnected with my mom online. She and my dad were both thrilled and invited me over for dinner. I accepted and planned on meeting with them this weekend. As the date came closer, I started looking at my parents' social media accounts and kept seeing the same woman and her family in so many pictures with my parents. She was literally on vacation with my parents, and I even saw my parents with her at her wedding. Even worse, later pictures showed that she had three kids and was referring to my own parents as her kids' grandma and grandpa. Yesterday, I called my mom and asked her about this lady, and she said that she was a family friend who they met about five years ago. She told me that she and my dad became really close with her and her family and considered them to be relatives. I was shocked by this and I felt pretty emotional. So I then told my mom that just because I was away, that didn't mean that her and my dad had permission to essentially replace me. My mom denied this and said that I couldn't be replaced. I told her that she was clearly lying based on what those kids were calling her and my dad. My mom started crying, saying that I was blowing things out of proportion, but I eventually hung up. That evening, my dad called me, and he sounded pretty angry. He said that I had made a pretty active decision to be an idiot and run off, and because of that, I didn't have a right to criticize him and my mom for going on with their lives. He mentioned how they tried repeatedly to get in contact with me, but that I kept on keeping them at a distance. I tried to argue with him, saying that we'd never be in this situation in the first place if they had been more supportive of me and Mike, but he said that was irrelevant relevant now. I was so angry with him at this stage, so I told him that I would not be coming over. He said that was fine since I couldn't be trusted to act like an adult. So am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? I have to say it, yes, you are absolutely the jerk here. How on earth can you really expect your parents to not move on with their lives? First and foremost, you did run off with Mike. You ran away and tried to have a life with him, all while choosing to go no contact with your parents. And yes, that was a choice. It wasn't a choice because your parents were meddling in your business. It was a choice that you made because you didn't like the fact that your parents were right about Mike. And guess what? They absolutely were right. Your parents saw exactly the kind of person he was, and when he broke up with you, you finally saw it yourself. I mean, think about it for a second. You disappeared for half a decade. They tried everything to get in contact with you. They tried repeatedly to try and make amends to find you back in their lives, but you decided to walk out. And then five years down the line, you conveniently come back when you realize that you were in the wrong and you're upset that your parents moved on with their lives? Like seriously, what did you expect? Your parents lost their daughter to some stupid loser who had no good intentions with you in mind. Like if there's anybody you should be mad at right now, it's your ex-boyfriend Mike. He's the one that basically ruined everything for you. So yes, overall, you are absolutely the jerk. Your parents did the best they could to reach out, but you were too stubborn to come back into their lives. And unfortunately, that is nobody's fault except for your own. Am I the jerk for not wanting to visit my family simply because I would not be able to afford the trip. Here's what happened. So my dad works as a tow truck driver. He is always on call day and night. When not working, he's either sleeping or he's hooking up with a new girlfriend. My dad sticks with one girl for a few years and then just moves on. The one he's currently with has kids and I don't want to see him play daddy to some random kids when he couldn't be there for me, my brothers and sister. I moved out a couple of years ago with my boyfriend. And ever since then, I have not visited my family out of either choice or affordability. I work in retail, so I do not earn a lot of money to afford a vacation and save for rent. The last time, I took a few days off of work, and I did not earn enough money to make rent in time, and we were nearly evicted from our apartment. A couple months ago, my family had a birthday party for my dad and was asking me if I was going to come. I unfortunately was not able to take time off of work, and I simply couldn't afford to do so either. Last night, my dad called me wanting to arrange a vacation for next summer and had the whole family over to stay together for Disneyland and several other events. Now, I told him that I would try, but a few hours later, my mom calls me and tells me that dad complained to her, saying that I broke his heart by not promising to go. I told her I was going to try and save up. I have my phone bill, I have my car payment, my cable bill, my rent, electricity, but with all that in mind, I was told that I was being a jerk for not promising to come and visit. So what do you think? Am I the jerk for not visiting, even if I can't afford to do so? What should I do? Honestly, you don't owe anybody any kind of explanation. Like, if they can't understand
understand that you're trying to save up money to go and have some kind of vacation with your family, then honestly, that's on them, not you. Like you already almost lost your house just because you went to go visit them. And you did that because you were trying to be nice or something like that. And because of that, you almost got evicted. And now the fact that they're trying to guilt trip you and be like, wow, you're not coming to visit us. You're an awful person. Like seriously, those people are idiots. They clearly do not care about your well-being as well as your financial stability in the slightest. So in my opinion, I don't think you're the jerk. I think your family are being jerks for the way they're treating you. And they're clearly just trying to guilt trip you all because your dad isn't getting his way. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, check out Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked in the description.